conservation is a growing concern for municipalities and the city of Edmond has developed this Xeriscape demonstration garden as one way to start addressing that concern. Joining me is Ryan Oshner, urban forestry coordinator for the city of Edmond. Well, welcome to our show, Ryan. Thank you, Kim. Could you start by telling me a little bit of background about how this project got started? Well, a few years ago, the city of Edmond was facing some water use restrictions. Mm -hmm. um, and OSU was aware of that. and. Um, they contacted us about some uh, water, low water use gardens and gardens and getting those established. Okay, so you began a partnership to try to create this site as a demonstration? Mm -hmm. We did. As that conversation kind of started, uh, mm -hmm. this, this property became available. Mm -hmm. uh, we acquired that and um, established this garden you see here. Okay, and we're at one of your city parks. That's right. Uh, and I actually, I love this park. You have that nice arboretum in back and the natural areas. I think this is a wonderful addition to that. I think so, it's one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. And as you started developing the garden, I noticed you mentioned that this, this site became available. It's an old house. And I think it's just a perfect setting for a Xeriscape landscape. Because it's, I know you've gutted it and made a pavilion, but it still looks quite a bit like a house. And you could really imagine this type of planting around your own home. That's just it. That was uh, what we hoped uh, people would take away from it. You look at it and I think you can still apply the things you see here and the scale of things uh, to people uh, at a standard residential house. Absolutely. What are some of the goals that you hope to achieve through establishment of this garden? Well, the overall goal is to, uh, to really show some of our residents and uh, citizens uh, what a Xeriscape garden really is and what it can look like mm -hmm. um, and maybe break some myths about what it is. Yeah, there's a lot of misconceptions that it's just cactus and rock. <laughs> I think that's right and I think uh, we see different here. Absolutely. Now I know you've been involved with some of uh, your local master gardeners as well. Now, they've been a huge help for us. They, uh, they've helped plant some things and help keep it looking nice. Uh, so we really appreciate their help on this. And in the future, we might uh, look for some educational opportunities. I think they'd be a great group to uh, to maybe lead um, to lead tours here mm -hmm. of uh, people who are interested, um, and to help you know uh, get that get that education and awareness out. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, David Hillock uh, with us up at OSU has been one of the people who's helped uh, establish this project. I'm going to have him walk around and show us a little bit more of the details. Enjoy. Okay. Thank you. Well, David, I know that one of the first steps when you're planning a Xeriscape garden is exactly that, planning, and a component of that would be zoning. Yeah. Right. Yep. <laughs> the, the, that's probably one of the most important parts of, of this concept of low water use mm -hmm. um, features for the landscape is that you zone your, your garden. So. Um, not only do you zone the irrigation, but you also group your plants together based on their watering needs. You wouldn't want one plant that needs a lot of water right next to one that doesn't need yeah. a lot of water. One of those would die eventually. Right, exactly. <laughs> sure. And that applies not just to our ornamental beds like this, but you can also do that with your turf areas. Exactly. Mm -hmm. and, and really, we never want to see our turf areas being watered sim simultaneously with our garden beds because mm -hmm. they usually don't need the same amount of water. So the, mm -hmm. that's part of the zoning. The, all the turf areas should be on their own zones. The beds should be on their own zones. And then mm -hmm. within those beds, you may have some areas that are, you know, that require moderate irrigation, um, mm -hmm. that have plants that need, you know, a fair amount of water to keep them looking nice. But we should dedicate areas to those types of plants. Uh, use, use less space for those, mm -hmm. those okay. types of plants. And then plan the rest of the garden into zones that have plants that require a lot less water. Okay, and we can also do the same thing with our turf. Different turf species have different water requirements. Right, mm -hmm. yep. We have some demonstrations of turf here at the site. Um, mm -hmm. Buffalo grass is one of them. Mm -hmm. It is the lowest requiring turf grass that we have. It's a natural prairie grass. We do have some unirrigated Bermuda grass, which is very mm -hmm. common yeah. uh, throughout the state. Mm -hmm. And then we have some that need a little bit more water. We have a, a zoysia grass site, and then we have one that's in a semi-shady area that is a tall fescue Kentucky bluegrass mix, mix which that those species 
typically require the most amount of water. Mm -hmm. The cool season grasses, the they cool use season a lot grasses. more water, yep. especially in Oklahoma. I'm glad you mentioned the shade because you also have some shady ornamental plants and demonstrate how to use xeriscaping in right. the shade as yep. well. Yep, mm -hmm. you could zone that too mm -hmm. uh, based on plants that need a lot of water or a fair amount of water, or you could actually go to more of a dry shade type of planting. Okay, and when you're talking about the zones, so that applies to our planting, but it also applies to the irrigation as well. Right. And you have, so we have our zones that have different water uses, but you're also demonstrating different ways to irrigate. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, in this site we were able to uh, use several different components of low water irrigation. So we have the pop-up spray heads in mm -hmm. some of the beds and some of the turf areas. Um, but they're kind of low volume uh, spray heads and have a low trajectory so it keeps it low and the wind doesn't blow it away. Hopefully has a, a you can get some that have a larger water droplet so it yeah. also doesn't get blown away. Um, so there's pressure regulation in the heads. And then in some of the other beds we have the other examples that you can use. There's a uh, micro sprays for shrubby areas. There's inline drip, ho uh, an inline drip system, kind mm -hmm. of a grid system that you can lay out through a bed too that provides drip, you know, water at a slow drip directly to the ground Directly and where the plants, plants need it. And of course we have those all mulched to help conserve the water that gets Exactly, out that's, an, that's one of the mm -hmm. principles of xeriscaping is mulching. Mm -hmm. yep. And one last thing I wanted to look at here is you have some rainwater management demonstrations on site here. Yes we do. Mm -hmm. um, we have, uh, this is a rainwater collection system here that comes off, it catches the water coming off of the roof. Mm -hmm. We have two 1200 gallon tanks to help capture the water. Now, most homeowners would probably bury these, put these underground because mm -hmm. they're kind of unsightly, but we left them above ground so people could see how they're designed and constructed. We also have a fence around it, so that's another way a homeowner could Yeah, you could, you could shield it, it from the fencing mm -hmm. too, and we left a little open spot for visitors to see it. Mm -hmm. Now, this system is also designed so that when there's water in the tanks, that it, it, it irrigates the landscape mm -hmm. with that system. And when it drops below a certain level, then it automatically switches over to city water and uses it then to irrigate. That helps reduce the demand on the city's water. Mm -hmm. And as we're capturing and recycling this water, it also helps reduce the amount of water that the city has to treat as runoff. Excellent. Now another system that you have here that is gonna reduce the amount of water going out into our storm drains is this rain garden. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we had this nice little corner here. It was kind of isolated and, and enclosed. Uh, it was a little spot and we had water coming off of this site here where it didn't have anywhere to go. Mm -hmm. So we thought it would be a perfect example of, of a rain garden situation where it would collect water here um, and hold it for a short period of time before it then soaks into the ground. Mm -hmm. And that just prevents, we have the depression, so instead of this water sheeting out into the driveway, it's going to soak into the ground and keep it right, on site. Right, and recharge the mm -hmm. ground water instead of yep, flowing off site. Okay. Well, this is a wonderful demonstration site, and I know you've been working hard on developing um, some educational signage so people could come out here and walk around, have a self-guided tour and learn about xeriscaping, but also some leaflets. Yes, we have some great signage out mm -hmm. here. That there's one for each of the seven principles of xeriscaping as well as those issues of water quality control. And then we have a couple of great leaflets that are available. One that talks about landscape plants that mm -hmm. you can purchase for uh, this type of landscaping, as well as one that talks about the principles of xeriscaping and highlights this demonstration site. Well, David, thank you so much for sharing your xeriscape demonstration with Oh, Oklahoma you're welcome. Garden. Thanks for coming.